There's an unwritten rule in every consulting firm, which is never use pie charts. And you might be wondering, why can't you use pie charts? They're in PowerPoint, they're in Excel, they're in every charting add-on. So what's wrong with them? Well, there are a few things. So in this video, I'm going to share why you shouldn't use pie charts. I'm going to show you a bunch of examples where pie charts don't work. And I'm going to show you what you should use instead. So let's jump into it. So here's an example of a pie chart, and it is as simple as it gets. However, I challenge anybody to tell me each group's proportion of the total. So for example, is product A 55% or is it 60%? It's really hard to tell without any reference point. All you can kind of see is that product A is bigger, but how much bigger is it? Really hard to say. Similarly, how much larger is product B than product C? Again, you have to calculate the size of product B, calculate the size of product C, and then you have to do the math to figure out how much bigger product B is. Now this is all because humans are really bad at calculating magnitudes or quantities from angles. And if you're taking my presentation course, link in the description below, then you know that one of the key principles that I teach is that you need to make your slides and your charts as easy as possible for your reader to understand. And by using pie charts, you're making them calculate using an angle, which is, you know, very, very hard for them to do. Now, you might be saying the obvious solution is just to add chart labels, but that introduces a different problem with pie charts that I'll talk about now. So here I'm showing the same type of chart on the same slide layout, but this time I've included labels and some more categories. And as you can see, despite adding labels to each of the slices on the pie chart, it's super cluttered and it's not very easy to understand. Now, pie charts are notoriously bad for presenting many groups, particularly if those groups are small. So in particular, if you look at the smaller gray slices of the pie chart, you'll need to do a bit of mental alignment between the category label and the data label. And again, you're making it very hard for the reader to understand at first glance what the pie chart is actually showing. So the lesson here is that pie charts are not scalable. They're not very good at showing a large number of groups, particularly if those groups are very small. So this problem with the pie chart being really cluttered and difficult to read only gets worse when the space gets smaller. So here we have a three panel slide. So compared to the previous layouts, there's even less real estate for the pie chart. Now what you'll see and what you'll notice is that the pie chart actually has to scale one to one. So it's a circle, but it's sitting on a square canvas. So you can't really scale it up and down or to the sides uh, independently of the other one. So you'll see in our example that we have a lot of space above and a lot of space below the pie chart. So it's a very inefficient use of space. And as a result of this, you can see that the segments are difficult to see and the labels are completely misaligned. Now this charting software is doing its absolute best to align the labels as best as it can. But even though it's trying its best, it really can't align them well. And that's because the real estate and the use of space is not very good with these pie charts. So by now, I think it's clear that pie charts are not a good choice of chart. The question is, what should you use instead? So one last slide, and in this slide I've used the same layout, but I've replaced the pie chart with a column chart. Technically maybe it's a row chart, but let's call it a column chart on its side. And we've also included the same number of groups and the same small size groups too. Now this type of chart doesn't have any of the issues that we just discussed with pie charts. So for example, you don't need to calculate the angle to estimate the quantity. So in fact, it's really easy to see the relativities between each of the different groups. So, you know, for example, product A is more than double product B. It's really easy to see that. Secondly, there's no trouble showing small percentages. We can just add another row or column to the end of the chart and we can add that group in with a small percentage, very easy to read. And then finally, they can be resized to fit any space quite easily because it's not a one-to-one -one kind of ratio. So I can drag it, extend it kind of vertically or I can extend it horizontally independently of the other axis. So it can really fit any space that you have on a slide. So this is what you should use instead of pie charts, a column chart. Now you don't have to use this really basic example of a column chart that I've used. You can use variations. So you can use stacked column charts, 100% column charts, grouped column charts, whatever's most appropriate for your data. 